Hello guys, it's me the Tank Index here and today we are going to be looking at the first medium tanks which are the medium mark A Whippet, mark B Whippet, mark C Hornet and medium mark D. So let's just get started. First of all we have the medium mark A Whippet. It was a 14 ton tank which was about half of the normal land ships. It had uh, up to 14 millimeter armor, uh, mostly on the front and sides, while the top lit probably had around six. Um, it had an eight miles per mile per hour max speed, which was four more than the large British land ships, which was a major improvement. Not only that, the two it had two separate engines, which means not only did was that did that give it higher speed. It also gave it less engine failure, which obviously is good for a tank because you don't want it to break down in the middle of battle. It was armed with four Hotchkiss machine guns and it had a crew of three, a gunner, a commander, and a driver, which was not enough to properly uh, use the vehicle's armament. So either occasionally a machine gun would be removed to improve the inside ergonomics and make more space for the actual crew because it was very cramped inside or an extra machine gunner would be snuck in which um yeah that i would not want to be to take in this tank with another machine gunner that could not be comfortable um so the german lecter kampfwagen which will get its own video was inspired by the whippets and 15 whippets were also captured by the germans only two being in actual running condition they were designed as Panzer a and used solely for testing because honestly only, having only two of these and still having to train crews for them would kind of be useless. Um, two, the British produced 200 whippets with the order initially being expanded to 385 once the British were like, damn, I like these. But then they were reduced back to 200 because they'd rather have a more advanced design like the medium Mark B. Um, 17 were also sent to the White Army in British resistance during the Russian Revolution which 12 of these were captured and used by the Red Army, though apparently the Russians actually preferred the heavier tanks for some reason. Um, they remained in service in there until the 30s, until they are phased out, like with most World War I tanks that were phased out in the 30s. Um, around six whip whippets were also bought by Japan, which helped kickstart their tank program, and they were also used probably in storage until around 1930. Next up, we have the medium Mark B Whippet which originally actually a male version was planned with a two pounder gun, but it was pretty quickly discarded by the designer as not good enough. Um, it had a four man crew of a driver, commander, gunner, and a mechanic who also served as another gunner. It, w it weighed four more tons than the original at an 18. Um, it had the same armor, basically at six to 14 millimeters. It was armed with the same armament with four Hotchkiss machine guns. And while it was slower at 6 miles an hour compared to the original, it had an improved 65 mile operational range, which I'd say even it, it evens it out. It's kind of worth it then. But um, the mechanic, this was a bigger tank, which meant that not only were the ergonomics better suited for a four-man crew, it also allowed the guns to be better you know, used, which was nice. Now, there's a lot of history between the Whippets and drama, basically, so this is when I'm going to get into it. Basically, the original Mark I tank was designed by Walter G. Wilson and William Triton. However, when Triton then designed the medium Mark A Whippet, he left Wilson out of the design process, and basically, Wilson just wasn't, a, a, you know, in on the medium tank program. So, Wilson was pretty annoyed by his primer and abandoning him, so he decided to design a improved Whippet. This turned into the medium Mark B Whippet, which also had the same designation for some reason. 400 were ordered before the prototype was even designed. This original order later, later being expanded to 700. But two factors halted this large production order. First off, the engine compartment was separated from the fighting, fighting compartment. And honestly, the mechanic having to go outside the tank during en in enemy fire just to get it back into running condition was not something people were a fan of. And second, Triton got mad again that he wasn't included in the second version of his own design. So he got back at Wilson by creating the medium mark Sea Hornet, an even better medium tank that also had tra trench crossing capability. So, you know, not only was the, the design, design have a pretty major flaw, there was also a better version available soon after. 
So this resulted in only 102 being made. 45 were adopted and 57 were sent to the scrapyard. Um, two were sent to the White Army during the Russian Revolution. One was used by the Soviets until the early 30s, seen on the left. Um, basically, this tank was kind of meh, to be honest. But now we have the Mark C Hornet. It was armed with 5.303 machine guns with a top speed of 8 miles an hour again. And on an operational range of a huge 140 miles. It did have a much larger weight of 40 tons, but also kept the four-man crew of the Mark B with the exact same layout. Um, and this tank had a lot of ergonomics. It was probably the first real um, upgraded tank model to have had this many you know, ergonomic features in mind. So first of all, the driver was given an odometer to tell how many miles he had left before risking a breakdown or running out of gas. It had a small map table. The commander had a revolving turret for observation. There were 11 vision slits, storage boxes for the crew's equipment, uh, speaking tubes to improve, improve communication, and the engine compartment was accessible from the fighting compartment, unlike the Mark B, which was a very major improvement. Now, back with, you know, drama time. Um, when William Triton found out that Wilson was making the medium Mark B, the upgraded version to his original Whippet, he was not pleased, so he immediately got his chief designer to work on an even better version, which basically the main purpose was capable of crossing trenches because he knew the British Army would go crazy for that. So originally 100 were ordered, that being expanded to an order of 600. However, when it became clear that the medium Mark D wouldn't be ready for mass production for the planned 1919 spring offensives, expectations were put on the medium Mark C Hornet. The tank corps expected no less than 6,000 Hornet, 2,000 of these would male versions with 6-pounder CWT guns like the heavy land ships. However, due to the war ending in 1918, all orders were cancelled. 36 tanks were in various stages of almost completed, and then another 14 were built for a total of 50. General J.F.C. Fuller, who was pretty instrumental in World War I tanks in general, considered taking the medium Mark D's budget and using it to produce more Mark D's to basically upgrade all five of the country's peacetime tank divisions, which would have been actually a pretty good idea, but decided against it anyway because, well, Britain was kind of broke by the end of World War I. These were Britain's most advanced tanks, and they treated it like that. They took very good care of them. They were not sent to the Anglo-Irish War or the Russian Revolution. The only action they saw was a victory parade where four of them took part, being the only British tanks during it, and the Battle of George Square, which was just a workers' rebellion with basically no risk for the tanks. Um, starting in 1925, the Mark C's were gradually replaced with medium Mark 1s and 2s, the successor to the original medium Mark A through D series. Um, and now we move into the medium Mark D. So originally, the medium Mark D began as an experiment on a Mark A Whippet, headed by Lieutenant Philip Johnson. It gave the Mark A a new leaf spring suspension, a better engine, and a Mark V's Wilson epicyclic gear system. Um, the tank's weight seems to vary from source to source, but it seems to be around from 15 to 20 tons, which doesn't seem too crazy. The original version could, the original version that was in the Mark A experiment could go around 23 miles per hour, which was an insanely good and effective speed for a tank of that era. Originally, 500 were requested for plan 1919. However, that number was reduced to 50 in 1919 after the war ended, and finally down to 20. Towards the end of development, it was actually turned into an amphibious tank. Um, so there are several small variants, basically. And all of these were one-offs, really. So there's one medium Mark D star made with a wider hull and new tracks and four-speed transmission. There was a medium Mark D star star built, which I actually misspelled that. It had a wider hull and better engines. It weighed 15 tons and can go 31 miles an hour, which is very impressive. The steering gear and transmission were also replaced. And then there were two medium Mark DM or D modified built. They weighed 18 tons and the speed went down to 20 miles an hour. But it was amphibious, but the complexity in design and difficulty to actually drive and operate caused it to be unsuitable for service. Now, for the final assessment of Whippets, the Mark A Whippet was the first real medium tank ever built. It complemented the holes created by heavier tanks such as the Mark IV, and it was essentially used, oh damn, our big ass tanks have broken through the line to get in and kill them all. And basically just caused havoc behind enemy lines. Its successor, the Mark 
B Whippet was also a decent upgrade to the already good design. These two Whippets were so influential that all smaller lighter tanks, such as the FT-17, were basically called Whippets for year to come. It just became a name for all smaller lighter tanks. Um, the Whippet successor, the Medium Mark C Hornet, was the best quality tank the British had and many, many countries had, even you know the French had for years to come. Unfortunately, there were very little of them. Um, and then the Medium Mark D was basically an embarrassment to the entire series. It was a very messy amphibious design that was produced in two little numbers to make a difference. Um, and, you know, didn't really do much. However, in general, the Medium Mark A and B influenced tank design for years to come. The Medium Mark C was really what influenced the design of the Medium Marks 1 and 2. It was basically, Medium Mark 1 was basically a Hornet plus an FT, which was, you know, pretty obvious that the Hornet was important in that. And then the Medium Mark D, well, it didn't do much. Sort of like the Mark 9, it did begin to pioneer amphibious tanks, which would be very important, especially in World War II. So it did something, I guess. But I mean, that will be it for this video, guys. Next time, we're actually going to go back in time and talk about the original tank uh, prototype the number one Lincoln machine the little willy and the big willy so if you want to be notified of that make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video please leave a like I really appreciate it and until next time this is the tank index out